Welcome, let's talk about calculating formal charge. Formal charge is a bookkeeping method that's gonna allow us to determine what the best Lewis structure is when we have more than one possible structure that can be drawn. I wanna emphasize that it is just a bookkeeping process. Really, on the actual molecule, we can't talk about individual atoms having a positive one or a negative one or whatever charge it is because these electrons are actually being shared. That's why it's a covalent bond. But for bookkeeping purposes, we can get a lot of insight as to what the most important Lewis structure is going to be. With that being said, what formal charge is, is it's a comparison between the number of electrons that are normally in the valence shell of an element and how many electrons have been assigned to it in a Lewis structure. The number of electrons that are assigned to an element in a Lewis structure are the number of lone electrons, the lone pair electrons are non-bonding electrons that surround it, as well as half of the electrons that are associated with its bonds. So if I were to look at the ion cyanide, I would notice that it has two non-bonding electrons, and it would get both of those electrons counted toward its total. And it has three bonds. That's a total of six electrons, so it gets three of those. And so from a formal charge standpoint, that carbon has five electrons allotted to it in that Lewis structure. Since normally carbon has a total of four valence electrons, its formal charge would be four minus five, so a negative one. If we look at the nitrogen on the other side, that nitrogen has two non-bonding electrons around it, and it has three bonds, six electrons, it gets half of those, so it gets three electrons associated with the bonding um, interactions. And so that's a total of five electrons assigned to it in the Lewis structure. Nitrogen normally has five electrons in its valence shell, so five minus five equals zero for its formal charge. And often you'll see uh, me in class, and what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna write those formal charges next to the atoms that they correspond to, just so when we glance at a Lewis structure, we can readily see what those formal charges are on an atom by atom basis. Let's take a look at one more example. The sulfate ion has the formula SO4 two minus. When you go to start this process, you need to start with a Lewis structure. So you're gonna nab it as usual. And once you've nabbed it, you're gonna draw your initial Lewis structure. Once you have your Lewis structure, then it's time to look at the number of assigned electrons and compare that to the number of valence electrons those elements and atoms would normally have. So let's take a look at the oxygens. They're all the same, so this will be the same for all of them. In this Lewis structure, the oxygen, each oxygen has six non-bonding electrons around it and one bond. So it's going to have a total of seven valence electrons allotted to it. However, oxygen typically has six valence electrons, so six minus seven is negative one. So all of those oxygens have, an, have a formal charge of negative one. Sulfur, on the other hand, just has four bonds, so that gives it four valence electrons. Well, it normally has six, so six minus four is a positive two. You'll notice with formal charges that the formal charges on all of the different atoms within your molecule need to add up to the overall charge on the entire molecule. So it turns out that while this is one valid Lewis structure, if we start looking at possible exceptions to the octet rule, there are other ways that we can draw this Lewis structure. I'm going to draw another one down below. We're going to take a look at the formal charges of that. So in this way of drawing sulfate, we have two different types of oxygens. And one of those looks just like they did before with six non-bonding electrons in one bond for a formal charge of negative one. However, the other two oxygens have two non-bonding electrons and two bonds. So that ends up with a total of six valence electrons allotted to it in the bookkeeping that we are doing for our formal charge. And oxygen normally has six. So those are gonna have a formal charge of zero. And in this structure, sulfur has six bonds to it, which means that it's allotted six valence electrons and it normally has six. So its formal charge is zero as well. And so we see that we have two different ways to draw the sulfate um, Lewis structure, and they have very different formal charges. In both cases, the formal charges add to the overall charge of the ion, but there are two different possibilities. And so what we're gonna look at next is how do you decide which the better formal charge possibility is for your Lewis structure.
When it comes to choosing what the best Lewis structure is or the most important Lewis structure, there are two things to keep in mind. First, you wanna make sure that your formal charges are as close to zero as you can. And then second, when you have formal charges on atoms, you want those negative formal charges to be on the most electronegative atom because those atoms are best capable of stabilizing that negative formal charge. With those two thoughts in mind, let's take a look at another molecule that has several possible ways to draw its Lewis structure. So in this case, we have oxygen bonded to carbon bonded to sulfur. When you now that you find that you've got four bonds, and there's three different ways you can arrange those four bonds, either symmetrically or with three bonds to sulfur or with three bonds to the oxygen. To determine which of these is the most important Lewis structure, we need to, to use formal charges. So you're gonna use the formal charge rules comparing the number of typical valence electrons to the number of valence electrons in the Lewis structures and write those on all of those different possibilities. So looking at these three structures, once their formal charges are on, it's clear that there is a better choice. And so that's the center one. This structure with the two double bonds has a formal charge of zero on all of the atoms, and that's gonna be preferred. Between the other two, the lower structure that has the um, oxygen bearing a positive formal charge is going to be less important because oxygen between oxygen and sulfur is more electronegative, so it's going to want to bear the negative formal charge. So in terms of rank order, in terms of greatest importance, we have a clear winner with the middle structure, but between the other two, the top structure is going to be more important and or a better choice than the bottom structure is because it puts the more negative uh, formal charge on the more electronegative atom. So hopefully at this point in time, you feel comfortable determining the formal charge on the atoms within a Lewis dot structure, and that can help you choose which Lewis structures are more important when there are more than one way to draw the Lewis structure for your molecule.